Hello, my name is Mr. Kilimanjaro and welcome to Top Gun, which is the best plane in Heroes and Generals. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at, uh, in a little bit of detail, some of the pros and cons of the now three different planes that there are in Heroes and Generals, and trying to reach some kind of conclusion about which one is, is good, uh, which one is best, and what their kind of relative strengths and weaknesses are of each plane. Um, so the way we're going to do that is in four parts. In the first part, I'm just going to explain a little bit about uh, the kind of the, the play I've had with some of the planes, because uh, before uh, Timoshenko came in, where you gained the ability to play on the U.S. side more, uh, the U.S. and the Russian side more easily, uh, I ex pretty much exclusively flew with the the German plane, the Messerschmitt. Um, and so I have a lot of playtime on that, which uh, almost certainly influences how I use um, planes and what I find most natural. So the offset wing guns in that plane are what I'm most used to. So uh, you kind of have to take everything I say about the gunning and the other planes with a pinch of salt, because uh, I've had a I've had a lot of experience with the offset guns in the wings. Um, furthermore, it means that the the, the smaller um, Yak Nine or the uh, slightly larger P38 uh, are also things that I'm, I'm less used to, um, though I, I've been enjoying playing them a lot recently uh, and uh, and getting my getting uh, getting back on top of uh, of the air game from the other side. Um, with that being said, what I now want to do is to take a more in-depth look at the planes. Um, so I thought we'd start with the uh, P38, then we'll look at the uh, the Messerschmitt, the BF109, which is going to be quite short because. There's not, there isn't so much to say. It's, it's one of the more used planes out there, I think, um, and I, I've talked a bit about it before. So um, we'll, we'll kind of keep that one quite short, and then we'll finish by having a, a slightly longer look at the Yak, which is the new plane, um, which is, is quite interesting. So, firstly, the uh, American, the the Lockheed Martin P-38. Um, what are the the pros about this plane? Uh, the pros are certainly that this plane is quite fast. I reckon a bit faster than the the BF one hundred and nine. Um, it looks quite cumbersome, you know, with the, the 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 two engines on the side, but that actually does give you a whole lot of speed, um, and that certainly works to your advantage when you're tailing after other ships, uh, after other planes even. Um, the other pro is that it carries two of the really big. Um, probably 500 pound bombs that, that those are on the wings um, whereas the BF-109 only carries the one um, given that they've changed it now that um, um, uh, tactical bombing uh, the badge doesn't give you uh, more bombs but rather quickens the reload time of all of your bombs and ammo um, having two to, to deal with to, to be able to drop before you have to start reloading can give you a lot of tactical flexibility whereas once the BF the Messerschmitt drops its bomb it's, it's essentially out um, so that is definitely an advantage. Um, another advantage uh, is the incredibly sharp gunning of the uh, of the uh, of the the P thirty eight itself. Given that the guns are nose mounted, um, so I've talked a bit about this before uh, in, the, in the beginning when I talked about the uh, wing mounted guns. So the uh, the Messerschmitt has its machine guns, the uh, the more ship to sh the more plane to plane uh, guns, nose mounted in it. Um, so those shoot fairly straight. However, the uh, cannons, the 20 millimeter cannons that it carries, which uh, carry the the variable uh, ammo payload, be that um, 20 millimeter armor piercing, uh, armor piercing composite, or HE, uh, are wing mounted, so they're slightly offset. Um, so they uh, they shoot in from the side of the plane and, co and converge kind of on the target where you're shooting, or slightly around it, as the case may be. Um, now, what that means is that uh, in in theory, the P-38 is more accurate because the, 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 all the rounds are coming straight from the nose and they're flying very straight towards the target. Whereas with the, you know, you don't have to think too hard about the angles to see that with the Messerschmitt, it's, uh, it's, it's going to depend upon where you're shooting as to where they're going to converge and how accurate you're going to be. Uh, in general, it's harder to hit targets straight on into the, into the cockpit, so for instance, if that's what you're shooting for, um, because it's more likely you're going to hit the wing on the, uh, on the enemy plane than the cockpit. So having those mounted guns definitely gives you a lot of accuracy. That's undoubtable. Um, however, it does lead me to the first kind of con, which is that the uh, the pinpoint accuracy, uh, whilst being quite useful, does make it, uh, in, I think, a bit less uh, useful for uh, attacking uh, enemy enemy planes. Um, just because what the what the um, 
with the HE landing on the on the wings for the Messerschmitt provides you with is the, the, the chance for that shrapnel to kill the pilot a lot quicker. Um, you have to land all of the shots very close to the cockpit uh, with, uh, with the uh, P-38 in order to kind of score a kill on the pilot. Um, whereas with the Messerschmitt, that's not as true. You can, you can reliably miss a few more shots and still yet be able to kill the pilot. Um, it kind of comes down to personal style. I'm going to put it down as a con, but for some people I've talked to really, really like the pinpoint accuracy, kind of the sharp shooting of the plane, in that it can just kind of shoot exactly where you want. And certainly when you're gun running on the ground, I can I can see some of the advantage to that sometimes. Um, the one the one exception to that would be against um, hardened structures, so the uh, anti-air positions in this game behind the sandbags. Uh, because they tend to be armored to the front, so there's a very there's only a very small slit in which you can uh, can f actually fire into the person in the uh, in the anti-air gun. Aside from the uh, the new Russian, the, the Maxim quad, which is very easy to, to shoot into because the, the person's completely exposed. Um, it's it's very difficult to hit the person, and if the HE is just exploding on the actual uh, turret itself, that's not doing you a whole lot of good against hurting the person inside. What the Messerschmitt affords you in this instance is the possibility for the HE to hit around them on the side slightly behind to do damage to them that way by not exactly hitting them straight on. That's why in my personal experience I think I found that it's easier to kill AA with the Messerschmitt, not with the P-38. Aside from that though, the P-38 does offer you very accurate ground fire against cars and that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's a, I, like I say, I think it's a matter of personal preference. I'm certainly a lot more used to the Messerschmitt, so I, I find the shooting with it easier for me right now. But uh, I'm sure I will get more used to the P38 too. Um, aside from, I think aside from the AA, that seems to be pretty just much down to how the guns are set. The other con, really, about the P38 is its overall size. Um, although having the more engines affords you a greater speed, you're also a fairly huge target in the sky. Um, there's a lot of wingspan to hit, um, there's just, in general, like, having more of your plane, uh, means that there's just more chance to get shot at, and that's, that's just not a, not a, not an ideal thing for a dogfighting plane. Um, that's why I think, uh, in general, unless you are an exceptionally good shot, you're gonna find that you come out slightly worse in air battles with the P-38 than you will with either of the other two, which is slightly more geared towards dogfighting. That's been my experience so far. Um, it's been very difficult to dominate with P-38s unless you have exceptional pilots. Whereas even non-exceptional pilots with Germans and the Russians will uh, find it slightly more easier to to uh, dominate the air because they just have that, that, that size edge against the, uh, the P-38. And the size edge works against the Messerschmitt as well. The Yak is, is much smaller and uh, is I've, I've, I've had difficulty hitting it um, reliably. So... Uh, given that size is a factor, the P-38 kind of suffers the most in the air. Um, it's only because of the, the pinpoint ground accuracy and the and the good amount of uh, large bombs, ha I, I reckon is the best ground offensive plane um, for most things that you want to do on the ground. However, it suffers in the air, I think, um, a lot uh, compared to the other two. So, um, Having said that, having kind of gone through all that stuff, I, I think that just about covers the P-38. Its strength is that it's a good ground offensive plane. Its weaknesses are mostly in the air. Um, it, it is not as good a, a, as an effect of a, a dogfighter. So, now that we've talked a bit about P-38, let's go briefly back over the, the Messerschmitt. The Messerschmitt BF-109 is the um, most most made aircraft of World War II, I believe, actually, um, and was still put into service for many years after. Uh, it's a very effective um, plane in that it has can fulfill a lot of roles quite well. Um, in terms of bombs, it has the least bombs of any of the other planes. It only carries one to the Messerschmitt, one, probably 500 pound, to the... Uh, 
the uh, P38s two, um, and uh, only one compared to the Yak nines four. But it's worth bearing in mind that those four are much smaller bombs. Um, they are, are won't do a, a, as much damage in a, as large an area as either the P38 or the Messerschmitt will. Um, the, the pro is that you just have more of them to kind of carpet bomb areas or to precision bomb against smaller targets like cars um, in kind of clumps. Um, so um, it, it is certainly frustrating to only have the one bomb, but it does encourage you to kind of use it quite well. Um, aside from that, it has the same number of rounds of uh, ammo as the, the P-38. Uh, the only difference is that we talked about it has the, uh, the wing-mounted 20mm um, cannons as opposed to the nose-mounted ones, which affords it some advantages in terms of the, uh, what it's able to shoot. Uh, affords it less advantages in, in terms of being able to shoot incredibly accurately. But uh, I, I, th I think maybe it just requires a lot of experience, but uh, I've certainly gotten used to the offset guns, and I find them... Uh, a very easy way to to shoot down uh, enemy planes. Um, it is it ought to outperform the P thirty eight in the sky against uh, in terms of dog fighting, um, just by virtue of being slightly smaller, and um, by virtue of the fact that it can shoot uh, can more easily shoot pilots out of cockpits. Um, even if the P thirty eight could perhaps shred another plane quicker, because uh, if you perhaps weren't shooting for uh, was something we didn't talk about as much with the P thirty eight. If you if you were to change ammo type and maybe to use um, uh, armor penetrating rather than yeah. um, rather than uh, sorry high explosive rounds then it would certainly be the case that you could shred other planes quicker just through the withering rate, rate, rate of fire that's afforded to you by those guns um, so perhaps that would be a better I haven't actually tried that it's, yeah, it's a good thought uh, perhaps that would be better than um, the um, okay, than the HE that I've been using thus far to try and shoot pilots out. Um, but yeah, so the uh, the in, in kind of just to very quickly go over it, the uh, the BF one hundred and nine is uh, very effective against um, planes. It has good effect against the ground. It's kind of a good all round fighter. It doesn't really suffer in any obvious way. Um, it's just a slightly different style of plane than the other two, which both have nose mounted cannons. Um, it is my my personal favorite just through kind of the extended use I've had of it but you know that that is just down to use I might prefer others for different things um, and it certainly depends what you're aiming more to do Bitch, should I die from me again? Having said that, let's move on and look at the Yak. The Yak-9 has just been introduced in the Timoshenko update. It's the Russian plane, um, and it's quite interesting. Um, uh, why is it interesting? It's interesting because it has uh, the nose-mounted cannons, which offer the kind of precision of the uh, P-38. It has uh, a good number of small bombs, but most of all, it's incredibly nimble. It's a very small plane compared to, especially compared to the P-38. It's tiny. Compared to the BF-109, it's even smaller still. Um, so it's very nimble, very fast. Um, it's well camouflaged, so it's not that it's not that easy to see against certain backdrops. Um, and it is all around a rather exceptional fighter in that, in terms of the uh, in terms of anti-air, in terms of taking down other planes, it is very very good. The the only real drawback to the Yak is the limited ammo pool, um, which is something I wasn't aware of until I got it, um, but has been a bit of a thorn in my side. It can only carry, I think, 120 rounds of HE and 200 rounds of MG. 
that is the nose mounted cannon um that's obviously the payoff for having a slightly smaller body. You can't fit as much ammo in it. Um, but compare that to the 2,000 rounds of MG that are, you're afforded with the uh, with both the Messerschmitt and the P38. That's a that's a huge difference, right? That's that's literally only 10% of uh, the amount of ammo that they have. Before you know, once that's out, you're out of ammo. You have to wait for it to recharge, and you're effectively not effective in the sky. Um, so I found that a lot of the time will be spent, you know, I, 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 I try and spend my ammo as wisely as possible, take down as many planes or ground targets as I can, drop all my bombs, and then I often have to retreat into the either skirting the, the ground very low or high into the atmosphere to just kind of circle until I get those bombs back. Obviously, that'll be slightly offset by the time you get to um, Bomber Gold when uh, the reload rate uh, on all of your um, uh, ammo reserves will be much faster. Um, but initially, at least, it's it's a huge time you have to wait to get that stuff back, and it makes you it makes you ha like be a, be effective for a short amount of time, and then after that you're kind of stuck there. Um, you, you just can't be as effective in a fighter. So that's as far as I can see the only real drawback. Um, the the limited ammo really kind of stings in terms of uh, you know everyone has limited HE um, because it's so effective or limited. Uh, the of the special ammo type because it's such an effective ammo to use um, so everyone's used to not be having to conserve that a little bit but we're all quite used to using a lot of MG um, in general it, it's what allows us to be uh, effective at taking down planes even when we don't have M like a HE you just harass them with your machine gun until you kind of bring them down it takes a while um, uh, especially if you can't score a lot of good hits in a consecutive way but it is possible um, it's also very effective for taking down a um, for taking down um, paraplanes, excuse me. Um, because of that, uh, it's much more difficult for Yaks to take down paraplanes. It's going to take three of them, two or three of them, uh, to kind of be able to bring one down together, whereas one of any of the other planes could potentially take down a paraplane by themselves, just because uh, you have that much ammo on you. Um, whereas no one Yak has enough ammo to bring down a full health paraplane, I reckon. Um, the only other downside to talk about would be the bombs. Um, it carries four bombs, which is frankly really fantastic. It allows you kind of a uh, copper bombing in a way previously unavailable to any of the other planes. Um, so you can strafe a large area with bombs if there's a perhaps like a a, a rather sillily um, positioned convoy heading from one point to another. Um, you'd really be able to to um, sort them out. But these are smaller bombs. Um, it's not as much of an issue as it would have been, given that in the Temeshenko update, they seem to have made it so that planes no longer occupy the same maps as tanks. So I'm, I haven't since Temeshenko played a game with both planes and tanks. If anyone has, I'd be interested to hear, because either they're incredibly rare, or like I suspect, they've just taken them out completely. Um, so it used to be the case, if people who played earlier remember, that uh, you often had uh, kind of light or me even medium tanks sometimes, though I, I think not, perhaps not medium tanks, but certainly light tanks and planes occupying the same map. Um, so you'd have to sometimes drop a couple of bombs onto a tank to take it out. Um, that would have really hurt the, the yak because the bombs aren't really big enough to do enough damage to a tank to take it down really easily. Um, they're much lighter bombs. But seeing as... The, the heaviest thing a plane's ever going to have to take down now uh, seems to be a uh, APC, an armored, per an armored personnel carrier, or the, the scout cars with the turrets for each of the factions. It should be more than enough to, to take out those. And against jeeps, they're perfectly effective, and certainly effective against clusters of troops. Um, the, only do the only weakness is the radius. The blast radius is smaller than the bombs carried by the P-38 and the Messerschmitt, so you have to be much more direct. You can't kind of drop it fairly near and know that it'll be okay. The chances are it won't. You're going to need to be much more accurate but having said that it is the the payoff for that is having four bombs which if you can be very accurate with should be able to reward you with huge amount more kills than uh either the yak or the 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 uh, messerschmitt does um in terms of pros we've really kind of gone over them incredibly nimble incredibly fast hard to hit uh accurate shooting akin to the p38 because of the nose mounted turrets and yeah it's just it's it, it's probably the best air air game uh, out there, aside from the limited ammo, if it had if it had uh, slightly better ammo conservation, it would undoubtedly be the best plane in the sky. But as it stands, um, it it is the best technically. However, it could be thrown if you 
manage to drag it along, make it waste its ammo and on the ground, fly through trees and stuff like that, and then eventually it'll just have to leave you. It'll be right, it'll run out of ammo. Um, so that's the Yak Nine for you. Um, uh, I said I'd uh, I'd talk about which one was the best plane. Um, uh, I'm gonna have to kind of go with my bias, even though I, I say to that bias in the beginning and say that I think the best plane is the uh, the BF 109, the German Messerschmitt. Why? Because it straddles both worlds. Um, it's whilst it, it isn't as effective in a bomber as either of them because it just doesn't carry enough bombs. That's the the one place where it's let down. I do find its gun running on the ground very effective because of the offset guns, and I have very rarely um, been been. Uh, sad with its performance in terms of the ground. Um, I think it performs on the ground adequately and it performs in the sky adequately, whereas the Yak, um, although it performs in the sky very well, um, it doesn't have quite as much ammo and it, its performance on the ground, um, although again, like should be very good because of the multiple bombs, uh, can also be a bit of a letdown um, because of the size of those bombs and the difficulty of using the, uh, the cannons. Um, so, it kind of, uh, you know, as, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I think what ultimately it depends upon what niche you want to fill. Um, I think the Yak is actually a really exceptional plane. Uh, I think the the BF-109 is good in, in, a, in different ways. And I personally prefer it just because I've used it, but I'm very open to the fact that the Yak might actually be the, the better plane. Um, I don't think the P-38, it can be the best because it just isn't as good as the air game. It's just too big, it's too bulky. Although that bulk affords you kind of uh, size in terms of like actually smacking planes, you'll probably come out better than either of the other two and you can take slightly more hits now, I think, than the other two can. But all the same, it's just not as effective. Uh, and you need something which is both good at both the air game and the ground game. And I think the Messerschmitt is currently, at least the way I use it, the one that is no, best at air game and yeah, best yeah. at ground game, um, uh, in 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 unison, um, Yaks are just slightly too too weak on the ground right now, and uh, P38s are slightly too weak in the air. So that's my personal recommendation, the uh, the the German Messerschmitt. But different ammo combinations are very possible. I haven't tried, <coughs> excuse me, I haven't tried the P38 with armor piercing ammo, which is something I actually I do think I want to do. And I haven't got the yak up to the point where my bombs are recharging quick enough to perhaps make it le more effective yeah. in the sky. Or perhaps you have different tips. Um, perhaps there's some kind of metal I'm, I haven't been using which affords you more ammo in the air. So please do let me know if that's the case. Please do let me know if you if you have a different opinion than mine. I'm, always, I'm very interested to hear what you think. Um, uh, you know, we, we all learn by talking to each other about this kind of stuff. So please do let me know. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this helpful. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the skies. Thanks for watching.